why pickpocketers are treated differently in the US and it made complete sense. Hey basic hello guys welcome back to my channel how are you doing i hope you are doing great if you are new my name is lizzie i want to explain to me why pickpocketers are treated differently in the u.s and it made complete sense they basically said that americans uh focus heavily on hours when it comes to working right and a lot of the times the pay does not compensate for the amount of hours that we work at that point you're not just stealing an iphone you're not stealing a phone that was made by apple you are stealing someone's personal effort labor time their life you are stealing pieces fractions of their life that's pretty audacious don't you think not just labor but emotional labor you are stealing all of that from them you are also stealing their effort all the times that their iphone woke them up at five in the morning to get to work you are stealing all of that effort that makes my blood boil into a gas just talking about it also it's more common um for american workplaces to just pile on tasks even though they didn't directly involve that in the job description so all of this right like americans having to just play like hunger games when it comes to employment take that all into account and then you consider in europe they're very heavily focused on like work and life balance and their tipping culture is different from ours as well. They're basically like, we pay our people livable wages, so... When you put all those differences together, it makes sense why Americans jump pickpocketers and Europeans just like silently stare and let pickpocketers just walk. Well, she was curious as to why pickpocketers in America are treated differently than the ones in the UK because in America you'll get stomped out for pickpocketing somebody but in the UK I guess that's not a custom and that's because in America we work for hourly wages for the most part you know so you know let's say you work at Home Depot you make $12 an hour somebody pickpockets you for $50 you just stole five hours of my life pretty much and, and i can't let that slide because on top of that you tried to rob me in america without a weapon home of the weapon that or the contrary point that they're just soft because me personally i can never let disrespect like that slide there's a lot of craziness that you deal with in being in america a lot of people that will threaten you with deadly weapons just for the whole 20 dollars that you have in your pocket that's an actual state of fear that's an actual situation where i can totally understand just letting somebody go but when the alternative is some dude is just gonna slip his hands into my pocket you think i'm letting you get away with that shit? because the fact that you try to rob me without the use of any weapons means that you think i'm soft and i can't let you leave thinking that i'm soft you're not getting out of the situation with both of your ankles intact if that was your entire plan yeah i don't disagree with the point that she made in the video that it's like you're robbing me of my hard-earned work or whatever but it's mainly that you're calling me a bitch and i'm not gonna let you call me a bitch i'll sit around here sticking your hands in my pocket like you're getting frisky with me on date night rob me into my face like a fucking man sorry not sorry if you don't have the balls to do that you're not built for this life of crime my friend and you deserve every second of the beating that you catch for being I was born and raised in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. via Anacostia, greater southeast area. I'm not going to say that pickpocketing is not a thing, but pickpocketing is more or less the least amount of crime that happened here. I graduated of high school in 2006. In the early 2000s and the late 90s, kids used to jump people to rob them. As in six individuals would jump one person for a North Face or whatever shoes you had on. You heard me correctly. Six in the pick my other hand can y'all see my dumb you can't six individuals would literally jump one person for one article of clothing that only one of them are going to wear now i know what you're thinking did they do this five more times yes there's also times people jump people because they were bored you also had individuals that are not afraid to walk up somebody and rob them with either a firearm or a knife brass knuckles sure why not so the idea of somebody walking up to you and being a sight of hand and pickpocketing is not going to happen so common to the people from the area a tourist yes tourists who don't know no better that get told that dc is like some form of american mount olympus when reality is just the mall where the monuments are and then a couple government buildings and the rest of it is the city national parks and hoods just like that dc is broken down to three categories national parks hoods 
the city with a dab of some suburban areas in there. This a dab. This is like little percentages, not a whole thing. With that being said, to think that you're just gonna walk up to somebody, put your hand in their pocket and take their wallet and you're getting away with this, it, it's not about to go your way. And because Washington DC police officers only seem to care about real crime, if you pickpocket somebody and they beat the living daylights out of you, you get jumped, the cops will stand there and watch it happen. And because they don't feel like doing the paperwork, they more than likely just gonna sit here and be like, you should have known better. Not only that, you could be trying to pickpocket somebody that more than likely has a firearm on them. And for all of y'all who aren't from D.C. to saying, but wait, you're not supposed to have a firearm in D.C. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 good luck with that. The rule of thumb with pickpocketing in the United States of America is very simple. If you're a tourist, you will probably get more than likely pickpocketed than a local. And the second rule of thumb of pickpocketing in the United States is this. We suggest you wear a vest. Have a good day. I, got, I can explain this perfectly. So in the U.S., um, there's very bad areas of town. And if you take anything from anybody, like $5, you're, you're going to die. Or, like, they're going to try and kill you. Like, low-key. Like, people will pull guns and stuff. So it's like, that's why pickpocketers don't really exist in America. Like, someone who's just going to take, like, your wallet in, in, like, broad daylight. Like, unless they're trying to go crazy. Um... So that's why it doesn't really happen. And also, uh, if you watch the Montgomery, Alabama fight, you'll realize that Americans are about it. Like, brawls and stuff, normal. Like, someone, like, I've, I've seen brawls happen at basketball courts and stuff in good areas of town and stuff. Like, you're, you're willing to put your life on the line in America if you commit a crime in public. Like, people are crazy. Like, you, you don't know who's, who's carrying a gun or who's, who's taking taekwondo or like jujitsu or muay thai like you just don't know and you don't know like who's willing to die that day because americans are crazy stick with me here for one pickpocketers tend to um pickpocketers in europe tend to specifically target tourists and Europeans at large don't really care what happens to tourists. And so, yeah, they're just going to, like, sit there and watch this pickpocket pocket walk away because they don't care they took that off of you. They're probably like, oh, stupid tourist. Um, secondarily, sometimes in certain areas of Europe, Europeans can be kind of weenies. And so if they get pickpocketed, they might not do anything. But also, referencing back to the first point, we don't really see pick like what Europeans do when they get pickpocketed very often. So they very well could be smacking a mess out of somebody when they pickpocket them. They could be. Um, third point. Europeans work as well. They can have hourly wages as well. Um, and so yeah, they are aware of how long they're gonna have to work to replace that that thing, and they're probably thinking about that as well. It's not an exclusively American thing. Um. And that leads me to point four. It's not necessarily the fact that, oh, I'm upset that this person stole this thing because I'm going to have to work to get it back. It's more so, you could have taken some lint or a piece of paper out of my pocket, but it's the fact that you came and thought that it was okay for you to slip your hand into my belongings or slip your hand into my pocket, into my person to steal whatever you stole, no matter how much it costs, that warrants an ass whooping. It just does. It's not about the fact that I have to work blank hours to get it back. It's the fact that you had the audacity to come over and put your hand in my person to take something from me. You gotta get beat up. You just got to. You gotta get dog walked at that point. Yeah, it has to happen. We live in a country where people can get their wigs split for looking at someone wrong. So it's not surprising that a pickpocketer will get their ass whipped. Welcome to America. Have a great day. In addition to that though, why do we feel so comfortable taking things that aren't ours? I really don't care if it's one cent, if it was five dollars. What's mine is mine and somebody else who's not me without my permission should not be taking it. I remember in high school, it was the first time I had ever gotten robbed or stolen from. And it was during gym. Some girls didn't lock their lockers. 
and everybody's locker pretty much got ransacked and everybody in that place got stolen from. At the time though, I had an Android phone so I was safe. People's phones were missing. Their keys were missing. The only thing that I was missing was $5 and I was pissed because to me, it doesn't matter how much, it doesn't matter the significance of the item. It wasn't yours and you took it from me. I made such a mess and I was telling everybody about it, but you should not be taking stuff that's not yours. That's really what it is like. I've been stitching this video nonstop every day for two months straight. I, I was looking at it as I, as I could see, I was like, how long has it been since I posted that? Two months. Not a day has passed where somebody hasn't stitched that. But I'm gonna sum up every response here. So you've got your like fake spiritual relationship gurus, people who hop on and they're like, so the reason that you attract that is because the energy that you have, the energy that you have is attracting that. And if you want to, to exude different amounts of energy, starting with your key. There's uh, the most popular man response, which is, and I, I don't have a car, so I can't. You just have to imagine that I'm recording this in a car. Be nice. I'm nobody's type. <laughs> I figured, you know, at my age, I'm nobody's type anymore. There's been multiple stitches by Asian women talking about uh, the type they attract because of the fetishization of Asian women, which is like its own specific niche uh, category of stitch of that video. The majority of women who stitch it are like, I attract this type of man and I wish I did not attract that type of man because they're talking about like their bad exes. In general, this video is where I believe the bullying of me has started. Like if you've been following me, like a lot of people have been making fun of me lately. Uh, for very innocuous reasons, like stuff that's not like 2D, but it is just like a lot of making fun of me. Um, and it started there when that video blew up on Twitter and everyone was like, you know, like, look at your bucket hat, bro. Look at your glasses. Look at the way you talk. Like everyone like took everything about me and started like nitpicking it. And then like every day since then, it's continued. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, it's weird being a social media person because... I like hate attention, but attention online doesn't feel real to me. But whenever it like seeps into the real world and I have to contend with the fact that like this, this thing in the box is kind of real. It's like, damn, like. And can fuck. I used to think that my grandma hated black people because she used to be like, black people, they own worst enemy. They just be doing dumb shit. What the fuck is wrong? OGK, you was right. Every single day, Dr. Umar's words are starting to make sense. I see so many black people in my comments I have blocked or they have stitched my video telling me to go to hell because I'm like, y'all need to care about what's going on in Palestine, what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in fucking Congo. They're reiterating the same fucking argument of nobody cares when it's our pain. That's not actually historically fucking true. I'm not gonna get into that right now. Every single situation that happens in the world does not have to directly affect you for you to form an opinion or to take a stance. This is why I say I have a weak fucking constitution. I can go like this and you'll fall down. I literally stand for nothing, just ignorant. It's a creator that got on here and I really love how he put this because he basically said that the reason why y'all say this is because y'all aren't confident in what you think. And that's 100% true. Y'all shouldn't open your mouths about things y'all don't understand. Like don't open your mouth and say, I don't care about this because I don't have the fucking mental capacity to actually understand what the fuck is going on. Because Americans, doesn't matter what color you are at this point, are very privileged. We live a very privileged life. We have never lived in a military state, okay? Like, yeah, the police be running rampant. They be doing some crazy shit, but we've never had people in front of our houses with guns ablazing and we got to get escorted to certain things. We have not lived the way some of these people are living in different parts of the world. I would not be able to handle that shit. Hell, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I get nervous going into Walmart. But on a serious note, we're going to need all the help that we can get, right? And we're human. It shouldn't matter that because these people don't look like you, they don't like think the same as you or they don't have the same culture as you that you should just completely discard them. Are you insane? What is the internet doing to people? I feel like it's really stripping y'all away of y'all. So leave your opinion down below what you think and don't forget to subscribe, turn on notification anytime I upload you will be notified. Stay blessed and bye-bye.